Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is David here with Go Ye TV, and I want to share something with you guys that's been on my heart. Just a few days ago, it was about two days ago, I was online ministering to this one kid, and um, young guy, I would say he was 15, 16 years old, and um, he had like a ski mask on, whatever, smoking one of those things, um, those vapes, and I was telling him about Jesus, telling him about the love of God and how he can be free from sin and things like that. And he just kept saying over and over about the things that he's done, um, sold, kid, sold, sold drugs to little kids. And I, knowing me and how I know the gospel is that your sins can be forgiven. You know, I know that it says in the word that even though we were yet still sinners, Christ sent his son. To die for us so that tells me everybody can be in nobody's left out it doesn't matter what you've done you could have murdered somebody you could have been hitler but i believe hitler and i know hitler according to the word that hitler could have been born again if he would have given his life to christ right after he died and um but it didn't he didn't it didn't happen two days later uh he killed himself after he had married his wife this his new wife so um but that goes to show you that the love of God and the power of forgiveness is much stronger than the pettiness of sin. And it doesn't matter what you've done. You really can be forgiven and you don't have to hold on to sin, but you can let go of it because of what Jesus did on the cross. And so I think many times we identify in our sin. We have identified with the past and the things that we've done in the past. But God wants us to know that the past is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Now that you've come to Christ, you can have a new life in him. And I was telling that to this kid, but he kept on going on and about on and on about the things that he's done. And I gave him the option. I said, listen, brother, you have two options. I just explained to you that the power of forgiveness in Jesus' blood is big enough to trample over sin and the things that you've done in the past. You can either let go of that sin, number one, or you can hold on to it. You can receive forgiveness or, you know, you can hold on to your sin. And he said, you know what? I, I, I like smoking. And I like doing these things that I've been doing much more. I don't want to come to God. And I was telling him that Jesus loves him. And he actually took the mask off and showed me his face. And, um, you know, there's not many people that I meet that actually say, you know what? I don't want Christ, you know, or they say to the, they say to you oh you know i i believe in god but i don't believe in your god you know but at the same time they can have a conversation with you and you can convince them to to come to christ you can persuade them rather to come to christ and know jesus you know and so people are hungry out here but there's there's a few times where i run into people and it's like they just don't want christ um or they want god but they don't understand fully the forgiveness that he offers compared to whatever they're following, because whatever they're following is just of themselves. Um, it's just really them idolizing their self outside of themselves in the form of a God, which is an idol. Um, because it always comes back to self-pleasure, self-gratification, me staying in sin, jealousy, bitterness, anger, lust, and things like that. Even the religions that you see nowadays and spirituality you know, they try to point to you to be a better person outside of um, God being the one to forgive you of the sin that you're in. It's just that that religion that you're in is actually empowering you to stay in self-pleasure, self-gratification and self-sin, you know, self-serving. Everything's self-serving in religion. And so the difference between religion and relationship with God, relationship with God has everything to do with you coming to Christ and laying all of yourself down and receiving all that he is and actually talking to him and he him talking to you back is relationship. Now, religion has you going to a man, going to a man only, going into a booth, confessing your sins to a man, got to go to a man to get to God. But we have one mediator, mediator between um, humanity and the father. It's Christ Jesus. We already got a man. We don't need another man on the earth to get us to the Lord. 
Now, we can have brothers and sisters in Christ that can fast track us into knowing God more because they, may, they have been taught more. They have had more understanding of the word and have more experience of the word. And they can fast track us and they can impart things into us, into our spirit. But, you know, I mean, outside of that, nobody's God. Nobody can be God to you. People can represent God and you can look at somebody and say, wow, God really exists because this person is alive and he's um, submitted under the spirit of God. And you can tell the love of God is just oozing out of him. It's not just, you know, him giving a bunch of head knowledge and you're like, wow, no, this is like something that's protruding out of a spirit that's coming into my spirit that's actually resonating with me. And I feel like I'm being freed um, whenever I listen to him or receive from him. You see what I'm saying? So. You know, it's just sad. Um, and I'm not crying, I'm sweating because it's hot in Florida. <laughs> but, it, you know, it's, it's really sad because that kid wasn't, he wasn't receiving. And I know he wasn't receiving because I can tell when I minister, I know when I minister, it's spirit to spirit. I'm not ministering um, spirit to head or head to head. No, it's spirit to spirit. And when you're a true minister of the gospel, you can tell when you're mature in the Lord that when you talk to somebody, you can tell that power or life is coming out of you, out of your spirit. And that person is receiving life into their spirit. You can feel it. It's a spiritual feeling that you have. It's a spiritual feeling that you have, you see. And so I can tell that um, he, he wasn't receiving. It was like a, a wall between him and me. And every time I was talking, it was like I was talking to a brick wall and no words were getting to him. And so um, it's just sad. But when you minister to people, um, minister to them the love of God. That's the only thing that you can do. And then give them an invitation to the Lord. If they don't want to receive it, that's on them. That's on them. There's very few people that I that I know that I've ministered to on the streets or online. And they said, you know what? I don't want nothing to do with God. I don't want nothing to do with God. I want to stay in my sin because most people in their hearts, their spirit, they know that they don't want to stay in sin. They want to follow after the things of God. They want to follow after what their spirit on the inside of them is longing for. That's what they want. <laughs> People who don't want to stay in sin, most people. So, but it's very few people that actually, man, they, they just want to stay in their own thing. So, um, I just want to share that with you guys. And I wanted to tell every single person by encouragement that you don't have to stay in sin. You don't have to stay in angerness, uh, anger, jealousy, bitterness, lust, the hidden things of the heart that clog you. You don't have to ever stay in that because the power of God's forgiveness will strip that stuff out of your heart and you can be free. You don't have to put it off until tomorrow and be like, I'll get saved tomorrow. I'll give my life to Christ tomorrow. And I've heard that a few times in my life. Even that kid said it. He said, you know, I'll just come to God at a later time. Well, tomorrow's not promised. You can die tomorrow and go straight to hell. And then all eternity, you'll be in the, that spirit of regret, you know? And you'll be regretting it your whole eternal life. That's not good. Why would you regret your whole eternal life when you had an opportunity on the earth to give your life to Christ and say, Lord, forgive me. I don't want the sin anymore. I don't want baggage anymore. I actually want to be free and free from myself. Lord, I don't want to live to myself. I want to die to myself. I know it doesn't feel good sometimes, but God, freedom is what I want. Lord, that's what I want. God, I receive that. Amen. So, yeah, that's an encouragement to the ministers that are out there. You know, keep on ministering the word because there's definitely a lot of people that will receive God more than those that actually just turn up their back on God. There's very few people that I know. If you actually truly minister the love and heart of God and people are there giving you their attention and their ears to you, most of the time they'll receive Christ. Most of the time they'll see the beauty of the gospel and be like, oh. I want that. And they will respond and say yes to the Lord. So um, that's what's on my heart. I could share a lot more, but I want to make this video short. I don't want to make long videos on here, you know. So um, but if there's anybody listening under the sound of my voice and you feel like 
you know what? I don't know Christ, David. You know, I, I don't know the Lord like I should, or I'm not hot on fire. I want to make this invitation to you that your sins can be forgiven. That 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross for your sins, for the forgiveness of your sins, for the healing of your body, and the restoration of your soul, your mind, your will, and emotions. You can be totally set free, and you can live in the freedom of God. The freedom of God is so amazing. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> It's amazing. Being lost is like you're just at a float in the middle of the ocean and you don't see any signs for help. You've been lost for months and days. The only food that you have is the fish in the sea and you've been struggling to, to get to the fish because you don't have the right equipment to eat. And so you're barely striving off little catches that you get. That's what it feels like to be lost, you know. And while you're on the earth, you still have hope. And so I want to tell you that you have hope. Every person has hope that's listening. As long as you're alive and still breathing, you have hope. But don't put salvation off. Don't put it off for tomorrow. You can receive it even now. So I make that invitation to those who are listening. You say, number one, uh, you know, David, I don't know Christ. I want to make the invitation that you can come to Christ now. And number two, you're not red hot on fire for Jesus. Be red hot on fire for Jesus, winning souls, telling people about Jesus, everything. And number three, you say, you know what, David, I'm not sure about my salvation. I don't know if I died right now that I would actually go to heaven. Well, I want to make this invitation to you that you can be sure you can be 100 percent positive. You can know that you're going to heaven. Well, how do you know that you just have that peace within you, that God lives on the inside of you? Because God, when he comes in and you give your heart to, and life to him, he comes and lives on the inside of you and you can feel him. You can know that something's different on the inside of you. So I make that invitation. And so if you would like to receive that gift that God has for you, just close your eyes, lift your hands to heaven. That's where your help comes from. And I'm going to pray and God's going to come and overtake each and every single one of you that's listening on the sound of my voice. So just close your eyes, lift your hands to heaven. Father, I thank you for every person listening. I thank you. Every person has this invitation, God, that nobody has to say, you know what? I don't want Christ. I want to stay in my sin. No, every person can actually have you. Every person can receive you, Father, and be filled with your love. And so every person that's saying yes to you, Father, I thank you for them. I thank you for them. And if you would like to receive that gift that God has for you, just say this prayer with your heart and lips out loud. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I let go of sin. Father, I lay my life down to you. And Lord, I receive this new life in Christ. No more of the past. No more of the old. God, I receive you even now. In Jesus' name. Well, if you pray that prayer with your heart and lips out loud, I'm telling you, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. You have a new life in Christ. You're in a family. You're in the family of God. You're in a family, and this family's amazing. <laughs> I'm telling you. So, <sighs> God is amazing. You're amazing. Jesus is amazing. And I want every person that's listening to go on about your day and just commune with the Father. Just tell Him how much you love Him. Just develop that relationship with Jesus. And every day, that relationship's going to get sweeter and sweeter until He comes. Amen. Thank you guys for listening. You all have been awesome. Please like, share, and subscribe this video. Share this video with anybody that needs encouragement, that's a minister that needs encouragement. I believe this has uplifted any person that's been listening um, under the sound of my voice. So God bless you guys. You've been awesome. Have a nice day.